Live from New York, it's National uh, Manufacturing Day. Hey, everybody. It's me, Lady Ada. That's right. We are manufacturers. And right now, we are manufacturers, which is why you're hearing all that noise. You're like, yeah. what's all that noise? Why, why aren't you it, in a sound studio? Why is it a sound well, studio? Because we're in a factory where we do our manufacturing here yeah. in downtown Manhattan. And it's, it's also made New York City week. So let's, yeah. uh, let's first And so we're just, making it New York City and manufacturing. It's our day. Yeah. So let's um, uh, go over this. So this is made in New York City week. Um, we are one of the partners in addition to the New York City Council, Brooklyn Landing Yard, GMDC, Con Edison, WDI, Adfruit, and uh, LISC, NYC. This is Made in New York City Week. Uh, today is the first day that they're kicking it off, and it's Manufacturing Day. Yes. And uh, I woke up today, and I'm like, oh, right, we're doing, oh, a, right, we're doing, this we're doing a virtual <laughs> factory tour today. That's fine. Yeah. You and know so, what's funny? We used to do virtual factory tours for years, and yeah. people were like, why would you do virtual stuff? And, and it's like, I don't know, like, why physically show up at a place when you can do it virtually? Yeah, and now it's just, uh, you know, cool, cool. Um, to do virtual stuff. So I, I thought I'd first start, start off with um, a little bit about Adafruit for the folks that are like, what do you mean you're a New York City manufacturer? And then they always what does say, that even mean? it was like, what part of New York City? And we're like, no, it's Manhattan. Manhattan. So this is our building, it's 150 Varick. It was a. Um, Westinghouse yeah, what radio they? inductor building. They used to manufacture radios and components for radios, uh, which was yeah. a very big New York industry. And it's really cool. I wish there was a book about it because I'd love to read about the history of electronics and I mean, radio in New York. Someone yeah, should write I mean, that book. Someone, uh, if, you, if, you, if you know of someone who's working on or knows about the electronic history of New York City, uh, send it to press at adafruit.com. Oh, cool. I'd love to check that out. Anyway, so, so this, this building was used for manufacturing and then it became a printing yeah. building. Yeah, and it's uh, still in, and still does some printing. Yeah, and it's and it uh, Panavision is here, White hmm. Kennedy, they're an advertising agency, they're here, yeah. and Adafruit has uh, a few floors here, and this is our team, um, pre-COVID, 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 and uh, we hope to. Uh, I mean, we could probably go outside and take a photo again, but um, this is right before COVID last year, and uh, we started doing stuff, uh, I'd say in a bigger way once we got to this building, but Adafruit was in an apartment, uh, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, actually a little bit, uh, maybe like six, seven years ago. And uh, we went from an apartment and that's where this actual, this picture came from, which is uh, just by the way, that was uh, your bedroom, I think. <laughs> and this was, or was the, the living room. room. Yeah. And we had yeah, a little tiny pick and place machine and we had, um, uh, we got a toaster oven that we did reflow manufacturing really on. Really nice toaster oven. <laughs> yeah. We have one other one we still use. Yeah, and um, for, for toast, literally. And once and uh, no uh, loans, no venture capital. Um, you can check out our about page if you want. In fact, um, I have I have some web page. Oh, okay. I have some web pagey stuff oh, here. Oh, on the internet. Yeah, that I'll go to. Um, cool. And this is. Uh, let me go to the the page. Sherry, here. Sherry. Yeah, okay. so this is this is our about page, adafruit.com slash about. And you can read a little bit about the company. You can see some of the things that we do here. Um, more was uh, the first lady engineer on the cover of Wire. You got a, got a lot of stuff going on. And you can see, you know, we have this made in New York City blurb here and more. And then um, the other thing is it's Halloween. So we've got this little, uh, you know, pumpkin. Yes. It's manufacturing day. And... This is one of the many things we do. We try to do something every single year and more. And if you want, oh, we have little quotes on our page. We have uh, our thing that we just got. We're uh, now a minority and woman-owned business enterprise. Um, that's pretty cool. You have to get um, like a piece of paper to get certified. Yeah, it has not really helped us at all, but since we're the only ones that well, are I out there. I think it's good to show like there are women and minorities who it, have manufacturing If you don't businesses. see it, you can't imagine yes. it. Yes. Is this the real thing? And so that's why we decided to do that. Um, another thing, and this is just because it's manufacturing week, or sorry, ma yeah, manufacturing week and Made in New York City Day. If um, you're a company and you're looking for people, we have a jobs board that the two of us will approve uh, yes. each job. It's a free jobs board. It's a great place to get a job or yeah. to hire people. We only let through like non-sucky jobs. And there's no spam, yeah. they're all real. And so, um, um, like for example, yeah. uh, Stanley, Black & Decker, they want uh, EEs and IoT engineers. It could be remote or whatever. If you do content, DigiKey is looking for somebody to create yeah. electronics content. So, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about Adafruit in a second, but the other thing is, um, like I said, it's Main New York City week, October 1st to 9th. And uh, today is National Manufacturing Day. And if you go to the website, it's madeinnyc.org, um, you can see other companies in New York City that are manufacturing. Tomorrow, um, there's some physical events. And all of New York, I, you know, we're, we're, we're recovering. Um, 
the, the city is doing, I think, better than expected. I can tell you on the ground, it is, uh, I think, in a lot What's of reasons. Lockwood? Lockwood looks cool. Lockwood. Williamsburg. Williamsburg Manor City. Yeah. And I think it's one, it's one of the reasons is um, all of the safety that um, New York City companies have been able to provide to their staff and the community. Um, the vaccination rate is really high here, and we haven't had any cases. And our team is right now 99% vaccinated and will be 100% by October 18th. That's going to be our, our mandate. So I do want to uh, let the folks know that are watching this that are, that are running companies, um, it is possible to thrive and do a good job manufacturing New York City, even in the middle of a pandemic, chip shortage. And then today we heard, you know, a chunk of the world right now is running out of power. Yeah. So some things are closed. So you can check that out there. And then also, um, well, this is just a different color one. Um, this is the uh, creatorswanted.org. This is the National Association of Manufacturing. We're a member of it. And they have a bunch of virtual events. This is, uh, and, and more. This is uh, our little page here where it has uh, this event that you're watching now. So that's a little bit about what's going on today. But I did want to talk about like what have we been doing, um, and then we'll do a little bit of a tour. So one of the things that happened in the last year is uh, we got asked to make face shields. Uh, this was March of last year. The city called us and said, we really need face shields for doctors. Can you drop everything and do this? And we had just shut down Adafruit a little bit before the shutdowns because we wanted to keep our team safe. And we decided to do it. Um, we have all these posters around here. We wanted to help fight COVID. And then here's some of the doctors that got the face shields that we made. And then here's just a little uh, speed up snippet of uh, how we were making them and how we were doing things uh, you know, mid last year. And we were able to deliver thousands to the city. And it was because we had all this technology here for doing other things. But it turns out you can make mass as well. And so um, we're thankful we were able to do that. We also, with our manufacturing capabilities, were able to provide electronics for ventilators, for all sorts of medical devices. And it's one of those things where like, it, it was hard to do. There was only a small team of us. Um, we didn't make any money on any of this. It was just like, let's do whatever we can to keep everyone as safe and alive as possible during you know, one of the scariest times. So I wanna, I wanna thank our team. Um, we took some portraits uh, during this time because we were all just trying to figure out how do we how do we operate as an essential business and how do we do things and stay safe and we did it just was it was really 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 hard um, so thank you team and thank you everyone here at Adafruit uh, who's been holding it together and we're we're at a finish line right now and I and like I said it's uh, it has a lot to do with it, it's easier and safer to operate yes. Know? So, yay. Yay. Um, so a couple of things that we're going to do in this, uh, you know, half an hour or so that we have together is uh, we have a live camera um, here at Adafruit. But we're going to, we're going to, because we, because it is a virtual tour. Oh. Yeah. So oh, let me connect up again. All right. Enjoy the wires. Okay. So let me get, okay. so this is us. Uh, you, you, this is, we're, we're in the background right there. You can't see us. See us waving. We're but this tiny. is us. This is us live manufacturing. Uh, right now, the team line. the team knows I'm I'm doing this too. I always uh, we're like privacy freaks here. Yeah. So um, you they, tell them. I'm like, hey, we're gonna be doing this. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. So there's in. Andy and Hector, and they're manufacturing electronics right here, uh, live in New York City. But what I wanted to do is have uh, Lamour, our lady mm, Ada here, an nice. engineer, um, talk about uh, this manufacturing floor here. Yeah. With this, uh, this is a pre-recorded video, but I wanted to have someone go through and show all of it yeah. to do a virtual tour. So here you go. What's going on here? Okay, so this is the beginning of the pick-and-place lines. This is the this is like the heart of Adafruit. This is where we actually manufacture electronics by placing components onto circuit boards, and then this long thing here is an oven that heats it up. Um, on the right there are testers that we use to test boards. Those are completed boards that came out of um, the pick-and-place. They're 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 toasted and ready to use. We also have a machine called the Selective Soldering um, Machine, which actually can solder through whole components. It's a different process. Um, we have storage for all of our components and testers. Um, these are the desks where people sit and they test each board. So every board that we manufacture is, is tested. This is me, I'm working, I'm waving, okay. Uh, and then uh, you can see we have a lot of storage. We have an old Radio Shack sign. Um, a lot of manufacturing is inventory management, you know, making sure you have all the parts that you think you have at the time you think you have them. So you'll see a lot of our, um, a lot of our space is taken up by component storage, um, you know, parts that we use in 
all of our products we have to purchase and they come on reels that we then load onto the machine and each board we have has a different set of reels that we load on. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's uh, go back to us. And then the other part of the tour I thought we could do is uh, let's take a look at our shipping and our storage and uh, it's like a, it's like a GoPro. There's a yeah. I feel like it's one of those like bicycle thing like when you when you're it like is a, like a, a uh, like indoor cycling and they're like you're you're bicycling around yeah. the city. You're bicycling around Adafruit. So um, this is our shipping area here. Um, yeah, back in the day, uh, Lamore was electronics and kidding, and I was shipping. There was just two of us. I did all the shipping. She did all the electronics. So, uh, do you want to talk about this, or do you want me to? No, this is so. This is where we store all of our stuff to ship. So we have about four thousand ish products that we ship from here. Um, about you know five hundred of them are manufactured on site, and then the rest are stuff like you know batteries, or enclosures, or other makers. We like we like to stock stuff from other people in the community. Um, we stock stuff like Raspberry Pis and, and Arduinos and boards from SparkFun and boards from Seed Studio. So there's a large community of about like 20 different companies that make um, electronics that we sell. So, you know, we like to sell those as well. And so have have like a kind of a one-stop shop. Um, and uh, we, we sort every item with a product ID. So we, st we kind of, inventory management for shipping is also really important. Um, but what's, what's neat is that, you know, we try to stock enough stuff that you can really build a, a project using everything at Adafruit. And also we stock all the things that are kind of unique and unusual. Like we don't like to stock like individual screws because you can just buy those at a local hardware store. Um, instead, we try to stock all the things that are kind of unique and interesting. And so a lot of my time is spent, um, you know, looking at what is out there in industry and then um, getting samples, verifying that the things work as expected, um, writing example code for them, and uh, we, get, we take really nice photos, get specification sheets, and put them up on the site. So it's kind of a curation process. We do manufacturing and curation. Um, for inventory, you know, there has been, this is kind of our, our backstop. Um, you know, we try to stock about one quarter's worth of inventory. Right now, there's this massive silicon shortage. Uh, which you've probably heard of, and a lot of car companies are having to close up or they're, they're unable to ship uh, cars. So we use a lot of the same components, and, and a lot of it is due to car companies. Um, they're a massive mover in the industry. It's kind of like that story of, you know, um, you know, when McDonald's wants to have the McRib, they have to make, they can only do it when, like, the pork prices are a certain amount, like, because when McDonald's yeah. buys McRibs for every McDonald's, it, it has a huge effect on... Yeah, like, Nutella is responsible for, like, a third of the oh, hazel, palm oil. Hazel, yeah. hazelnuts on, on planet Earth. Right. So, so you know, we're, we're kind of a small company in this very large ecosystem of, you know, companies like Apple and, and Ford and Toyota. Um, but, you know, we, we try to have a, like a niche there where we can um, still get in stock components and keep them on site uh, so that we can manufacture goods for the next three months. But it's been interesting dealing with the silicon shortage. You know, it's, it's definitely been challenging. I've seen, you know, I've, there's stuff I would have liked to get out and, and publish and I couldn't because, you know, I'm ready to go, but then the part isn't available and the part isn't available for like up to a year sometimes. Yeah. So um, I thought what we would do is, uh, so that's a tour yeah. and uh, uh, promise delivered. We we wanted to do the virtual, virtual, virtual tour, tour done. but we also wanted to show some actual things that we're making here right now. So do you want yeah. to show the tester? Well, I thought I'd show some of, you know, yeah. I thought I'd show what a circuit board looks I feel like. like. I feel like once in a while I need to, like, uh -oh. cut to the manufacturing cam. They're cleaning up the... Yeah, so when the reel the has the... all the parts that are finished, there's yeah. these, you know, the, the plastic sleeve is left over. Yeah. Um, so anyways, we're making some stuff right now, and uh, you have some things that, that you want uh, uh, yeah. to tilt this Sorry, so you this can... Is, yeah, this is a little tilty. Um, what is this? So this is... These are the circuit boards. So, you know, when, we, when you manufacture a product... Uh, we start with a circuit board design. So this one is a four panel. Um, you'll notice because there's one, two, three, four boards. Um, whenever we manufacture stuff, you know, you usually don't manufacture literally one at a time. You try to m manufacture, uh, you know, a bunch at a time um, in parallel because it speeds up um, the process. And also, you know, you have a fixed size that the machines like. So it's like as many as you can fit into this shape is however many you can make um, at once. So this is a macro pad. So this is a um, a three by four keyboard with a rotary encoder, and we've got like some cool space themed art. One of the things we like to do with our electronics is that 
um, you can we have little Easter eggs or or design elements that we can add um, because you know when we make a, a circuit board design the thing that's like technically important is, is all the copper all the gold pads and what they connect to and, and you know we of course do that and, and make sure we do a good job with that but then there's all this leftover space it's like well we could we could add a little space man space cat over here or like this is kind of a cool um, you know spaceship element like rotating element um, over there and sometimes you know on the on the final design of the board we also have a, like a gold plated design so we like to play around with um, the process of making circuit boards but uh, I design every circuit board it goes through you know multiple revisions um, I use CAD tool to do that I use Eagle CAD but there's also um, KiCAD is a free and open source CAD software the only reason I don't use KiCAD is I didn't grow up with it and you know it's one of those like whatever you grow up with is kind of it's like it's like my native tongue yeah. So I use, I use Eagle CAD, but and there's then, tons I, of others. And then, you know, lo there's a lot of acronyms and like, you know, what is this like KiCad thing? That doesn't really matter. Um, those are like tools of the trade for EEs yeah. that use software packages. But uh, a couple little other things that are interesting. Um, so on average, uh, we create uh, at least a new product about once a week. A new original product comes out once at, a week. At least, yeah, for yeah sure. at least. And so on Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock, we have a show called Ask an Engineer, and we have a new product section. And that's when we show everything. We do live demos. Um, we ship about 30,000 packages from here, New York City, USA, <laughs> yeah, every, month. Um, every month, Yeah. and uh, we've always been profitable, and then, you know, you can, you can look around um, online, I think one of the last times we were asked, like, revenue, uh, $40 million in about a year, and so this is a business business. Um, it's yeah, not, we have 150 people almost, yeah. all together, and a lot of engineers on staff. Yeah. And developers and artists and uh, people who do music yeah, and people we do, who we do film, photography. We have a puppet show, and you can't see it behind me here because um, we've moved our cameras, but we have some, some puppets that we have do things with us as well. Um, and then someone in the chat, um, by the way, if you want to ask any questions, you can do it mm -hmm. on uh, YouTube um, or Discord at YouTube uh, today probably because that's what most people are watching this on. Um, someone said, oh, like, is there any way to optimize uh, our, our gathering and shipping because it looks like people are walking around? And the answer is we already do. So, um, or at least you can always add more efficiency, but one of the things that we did is uh, velocity storage. So based on how frequently something is ordered or when we print out the invoices, the path for someone to take, if they walk to a place, all the things are available for them to pick up on the way there and on the way back. Yeah, like so, the order in which it appears on the invoice is the order in which you where, can walk. Where it is, yeah. Right? I think, it, is that still true? Yeah. Okay. And so um, all the shelf, we have shelf there. locations. Now we have barcodes for everything. Back in the day, it was just me shipping. I have to remember everything. And it was just in our living room, so not so bad. Um, but now it's, you know, 50,000 square feet plus. Mm. Um, and then we have about 3,000 resellers um, around the world. Um, DigiKey and Mauser are probably our two biggest ones if you like to order um, stuff from uh, some of the larger we components. We also have, suppliers. you know, Europe, Europe and Japan yeah. and uh, Canada and the UK. Yeah, we ship worldwide except for we're, we're not allowed to or right. can't. Um, and, uh, you know, you could post some questions in the in the chat if you have anything, but um, back to the manufacturing. So what else okay. have you been working on? So, um, so yeah, so this is the, the board before it's, yeah, this was the PCB, the raw PCB that we get. Uh, and then this is after it's gone through the pick and place. So that's actually the board that they're manufacturing. I just totally, I totally snagged this off of the end of the line. So you can see that um, whereas this has, you know, these blank gold pads, this version has uh, components. So there's like a microcontroller here and um, a USB connector and a speaker, even says speaker, um, and LEDs and sockets and, um, you know, other components that are, are placed on top uh, on the pick and place and then um, heated in the oven to, to permanently attach them. Um, you know, a lot of manufacturing is, is process management also. You know, what processes can you use and can you minimize the processes? Because um, especially with electronic manufacturing, some processes are very... Uh, messy and expensive and time-consuming and some are um, very fast and efficient so pick-and-place is extremely fast and efficient yeah, you really want now. to use the pick-and-place as much as possible what you want to avoid is having um, human labor as much as possible um, because it's repetitive and it's not as interesting and it's slow compared to this machine which can place I think you know 60,000 components an hour or something you know thousands, yeah thousands and we have components. two of them um, and one of the things that we did was we said, well, you know, this is working out, and if we can um, 
we can make enough money to save enough money, we can buy another machine in case one goes down or if we want to optimize our um, production. There's the oven. That's the thing on the right there. Yeah. And then there's two pick-and-place machines, a board loader, a stenciler. Um, there's Andy. Uh, he's one of the people who runs the machines here. And then let me try to zoom in a little bit more, see if, like, I want to see what I can do here. I haven't played with this camera in a bit. and It's working. Yeah, like so back in the day, we would, like, put this whole setup on a cart and push it around. But I thought, you know what? I could probably just uh, film it um, and then have, have something. But that's the machines right now. I think they're uh, on break at the moment. And the next thing we have is you have a tester you want to show. Yeah, right? so the final step is after we manufacture stuff, we go through the test process. So building a test jig is also really important. You know, a lot of people, when they learn welding or woodworking, um, they, they, you know, you start with thinking like, oh, I'm just going to use a saw and I'm going to like weld or use a CNC. And then you realize actually 90% of your time is spent jigging, um, holding the thing into place and measuring it and getting it into the right setup so that you can do the process that you want to do, whether it's lathing, or milling, or welding, or soldering, or, or you know, drilling, or whatever. Um, and it's, just, it's similar with um, electronics. You know, you spend a lot of time on the design of the product, but then you also have to design how to test it. Because the pick-and-place machines will place components, but depending on humidity and temperature and, and um, vibration, you know, we're over a, a subway, and so there's sometimes the, the building shakes a little bit. Or just, just like random chance, because we're dealing with small electronic components, um, things won't place in the right location. Sometimes humans make mistakes. We don't load the machine right. We flip something upside down. And so being able to detect errors very quickly is very, very important. Um, I've definitely heard of people who didn't uh, have a test procedure when they went to manufacturing because they're like, how, how, you know, what could possibly go wrong? And then they get 5,000 boards back and they're all wrong. They're all upside down. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, I didn't even think that that was possible. So it's really important to have a full test procedure. So this is um, a test jig, so this is also something I designed. Um, this is a, uh, a test holder which has um, test, test pads, little test points. When you look at electronics, you often have these little gold pads on them um, that are used to uh, perform a test procedure. So then I, I clamp it down, I got this nice little clamp, and then when I plug this in, so it loads a test program in and then, uh, let's see, this is, okay. Um, I'm clamped down properly, and it, this is like it telling me what it's doing. So it says, okay, I tested all the switches, and then I have to test the rotary encoder. So I have to rotate this, and you can see all of the lights light up. And then it says, please push. I push this down, and it says test pass, and then, you know, it took 25 seconds to pass test. So a lot of my time is spent not only in the, in the designing of the hardware, which is important, but how to perform the test procedure very quickly because the time to manufacture something is usually actually a lot less than the time it takes to test it. It takes longer to test an item than it does to manufacture an item. Not always, but, but for many electronic components yeah. um, because a human, again, a human is involved. Yes, you can automate that, but even then it's, it's very challenging. It's, a, it's very, you know, a human has to lift a thing and move it. Here. It's tough to automate that, whereas a pick and place, you know, an oven, those are well automated. A lot of people, they don't realize how much stuff we have is not automated. It's done by hand. Um, humans are really good at grasping things, moving them, pressing buttons, um, looking at colors, looking at text and recognizing it, and recognizing when something goes is not being tested properly. Um, you know, it's, it's the unknown unknowns that humans can be actually quite good at. Uh, that, that robots are not, and so each thing is, is tested by a human. So the key is how do I make it uh, as fast as possible to test? So, you know, in this case, it took me, you know, 25 seconds, but my goal is to make it, you know, 10 or five seconds or less. And then a uh, couple questions that came in from the chat, and I'll answer them. So they asked, do we have any, uh, what do we do about e-waste? Well, we work with New York City, and we deliver anything that we have that is considered e-waste. Here's one of the things. But the most important thing is if you do good designs. Yeah, we're really efficient. <laughs> that don't, that have good yield, that's more important. I mean, yeah. when, when companies make phones like Apple and Samsung, the first runs, they throw away like 50 to 80 percent of their product the, as they the get there. The yield is really low. The yield is quite yeah. low. You never see it, and you never know about it because it's hidden. Um, but for us, it's very important for us to have 99 percent yield, 98 percent yield or higher. Um, we're very, you know, it's not just it's, it's not just because we would want to reduce e-waste, but of course we want to reduce our time, we want to reduce um, our effort. We don't have to, we don't want to rework stuff. So, having good yield, which comes from good design, good test, and good process. Yeah. 
will reduce your e-waste. That's more important. You, you solve the problem early. There's no real recycling in electronics. None. I mean, like, there's this fantasy of, like, oh, you can... No, there's non-recycling. It's, it's, it can be disposed safely, but it's, it's not recycled. I think as, as, as efficient as you are is the goal, because if you're not throwing away anything yeah. and your yield is, like, 99, over 99%, which ours is, then... Um, yeah, you want to keep it out of the out of the recycle bin, out of the trash bin. That's more important than than some fantasy of like, oh, I can make something and then I, I, yeah. I put it in the recycle bin and it's oh. going to be recycled. And then uh, the follow up that they had was now they're talking about like, oh, do you have uh, any examples of taking apart stuff and using those parts for things? So I would check out. Um, our learn system, Adafruit uh, learn system, learn.adafruit.com. Yeah, there's makers because, who do that. Yeah, but we, we you would not do that for a final product. Yeah, no, we would, nobody would want that anyways. We, nobody we would want take a part used. Of, yeah, we wouldn't take apart a TV and then turn it into something else. That being said, though, there's a lot of components that people can use. Well, we so, couldn't anyway. A lot of older components have lead in them and we can't use them anyways. Yeah. So one of the things that folks can do is take a look at our learn guides. Um, I guess I'll pull up our learning system. Another thing that you could do is uh, on our show and tell a couple weeks ago, mm. we had Randy from Instructables and it was about how to make robots from basically junk. Yeah, that's And fun. so you might want to check that out because I think that has uh, what you're looking for. And Trash a lot, bots. And then you can take some of the things that are like out of an old toy and then add some like modern components from Adafruit. Um, so this is learn.adafruit.com and it has uh, pretty much every possible thing you might want to build with electronics and more. Um, I should also mention we have a subscription service called Adabox. If you want to get um, electronics delivered to you every three months, the Halloween one's coming up, and go to adabox.com and check that out. Um, it is uh, there is like less than 40 openings out of the thousands we have because we will run out of things. So for Learn, I thought one of the things. Uh, let me go to the Learn uh, the new ones with the new guides. Um, here we go. So just to give you an idea, here's a no code uh, IoT door alarm. Um, you can uh, HID, which are like uh, control devices. Um, we have guides on understanding the differences of micro, uh, sorry, SD cards and micro SD cards, and just a whole bunch of stuff: how to use printers, how to make these glasses, how to do um, all sorts of lighting. Here's a, a cosplay a costuming thing. So we have we have quite a bit. Yeah. Um, and then uh, let me see if there's anything else. We have a couple, like one more minute. Yeah, we have one more minute. Um, oh, since someone said Adabox sounds interesting, I'll just I'll just go there. Um, so if you go to adabox.com, we have like a couple slots left too. I yeah. think. Yeah. Right? Someone's asking if we would do like classes or anything. So there's other people that do a really good job. Uh, First Robotics, of course, is a kind of after-school program. But there's tons of maker spaces and hacker spaces, and there's uh, ones in Queens, ones in Staten Island, ones in Manhattan. Um, one of the things that we like to do is is publish. So uh, people use our guides in these things. Um, Having, having people in a workshop would be a different business. We want to keep making the electronics for people who do those things. So anyways, Adabox is here. Um, you can check out the trailer of uh, what we try to update all the time. You can see um, some of the past ones and more. And so far, so good. Uh, the next one is probably uh, shipping in another week-ish. Yep. So let's go back here and see if there's anything else before we go out. Do, 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 do. I think we got to everything. We did. Okay, great. So right Half on time, on the dot. right on budget. That's right. Um, thanks, everybody. That, thanks, everybody. That was your Made in New York City week uh, first uh, thing of the of the Made in New York City uh, agenda. A great way to kick off so, October. Yeah, today was the virtual tour at Adafruit Industries, and there's a bunch of stuff in store for thanks the entire week. Thanks for coming week. by virtually. And it's, and it's uh, manufacturing day. Yeah. And I hope that folks uh, see us doing this and know anything is possible <laughs> because uh, that, is, that is one of the things we hear a lot. Like, what do you mean you're manufacturing in Manhattan? And, yeah. and it turns out it, it does make sense. It is, it is good financially to do. Um, Lamar can design something and make it and test it all right here in a matter of days or weeks where when you do overseas manufacturing, it's every single thing you do could be up to a month. And then if you add chip shortages, and then if you add uh, power, uh, electricity shortages in China, then if you add things like you can't actually get it on a boat or get it off a boat right now. No, it's like you can't get stuff through it the, is, the train system. You can't yeah. get stuff off the boat system. Yeah. It is a good time to be manufacturing in the U.S. Uh, and we hope many, many, many other people do. And there's a safe way to do it. Um, yeah. We also know that COVID is still happening. Um, a lot of folks uh, aren't even returned to the office yet. 
Uh, we were an essential business, so we had a small team that decided to make face masks and all sorts of electronics for medical devices, but now we're back in the full swing. So if you want, check out adafruit.com, buy something and support a New York City company and all of the people here and their 401ks and their um, salaries and all the benefits that we have and tons of benefits that we have yeah. to, to have this is one of the uh, best places to work. Yay. And if you're in New York City and you uh, are looking f for a job at a, a place like Adafruit, you can always email employee resources at adafruit.com and send in your resume. And that is our show for tonight. Thanks, Today, everybody. everybody. Thanks for coming by. Half an hour of a virtual tour and chit chat. Uh, don't yep. forget, if you have more questions, come by Ask Engineer every Wednesday Eastern on YouTube. Yeah. In our in our YouTube uh, at 8 p.m. Yeah. Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 8 for YouTube. Right. Okay. That was it. Thanks so much, everybody. Here Bye. is your moment of Zener. <laughs> so we don't our other show. <laughs>